I'm making a robotic arm and in this video I'm gonna add some pretty cool upgrades including inverse kinematics and also some other stuff. Peachy. Alright, let's solve the inverse kinematics. So this is the robotic arm. It has four motors, one for the base, then these two and the last one is for the gripper. For the inverse kinematics the input is going to be the spatial coordinates, so x, y and z, and also the gripper angle. So if the gripper angle is zero, it's going to be parallel with the ground. If it's minus 90 degrees, it's going to point to the ground. So that's also the input. And the output are going to be angles of these four motors. The function that does this is called inverse kinematics. It's kind of boring to solve. I've already done that but it's very useful so i'm gonna speed run this i'm gonna ignore the base rotation and just solve it as a 2d case for now so the base rotates these are the three links where the last one is the gripper we know the coordinates of the gripper because that's the input and we also know the angle from this we can easily calculate this point because it's just this point and we follow this line i'm gonna call it x and y3 so we just take this point of the gripper and we subtract this line to get this point. Then we have just a simple RR manipulator, so we can draw this triangle and use cosine law to get these two angles. First we need to calculate this length, I'm gonna call it L23, it's just gonna be the square root of coordinates of this point. Now we can use cosine law to get this angle, I'm gonna call it alpha3. Since we know alpha 3, theta 3 is just 180 minus alpha 3. And we solved the first motor angle. We can use cosine law again. To get theta 2, we need this angle. I'm gonna call it beta 2, which is just the arc tangent of y over x. And to get theta 2, we just add these two angles up. Now we need to calculate the theta 4 angle. This is just going to be the negative of theta 2 plus theta 3. So we get the zero angle and then we add gamma 4. Okay, the 2D case is solved. Now for the 3D case, this is going to be quite simple. If you look at this linkage from the top, this is just a straight line and we can calculate theta 1 easily because it's just the arc tangent of z over x and the z is also the input, so we know that. Now we just need to make a single correction. So we've assumed this is a 2D case, we've used this x, but if you look at this, if theta1 isn't zero, this is gonna be rotated and we need to assume that x is longer. I'm gonna call this xl. If you do xl times cosine of theta1, you get x. And for the 2D case, we need to use this length xl instead of x. So XL is just this, and if we plug this into our previous equations, it's all gonna work out. Now we got our Ilban equations, and the inverse kinematics has been solved. Now we just need to translate this to the code. Usually the code uses radians, and here I've used degrees, for example here it's 180 minus alpha 3, so you need to use pi instead of 180. Also, there's gonna be some problems with the motor alignment, so some of the motors are flipped. So you also need to flip the sign in the equations, but you can sort this out later. You just use the equations, look at the motors that are problematic and just flip the sign. As you can see, solving the inverse kinematics analytically isn't that much fun. And if this wasn't a simple language, this would be an absolute nightmare. I've originally wanted to use a numerical solution with Jacobian, which would be quite interesting. But when I, I was going through the math, I, I'm not sure if the Arduino Nano would be able to compute all of this in a reasonable time, because you need to compute more equations than when you solve it analytically. So I've ended up uh, doing the analytical solution. But hopefully in some future projects I'm gonna be able to use that, because even though it's more complicated for the Arduino, for me it's much simpler to calculate. You just write the forward kinematics, which are much simpler. 
and it solves the inverse kinematics iteratively and you don't need to do that much math. When you do anything like this that is remotely complicated, it never works. So instead of just transferring it straight to the real robot, to the Arduino, I wrote this Python script which calculates the inverse kinematics and iterates the gripper angle. So this red dot, that's the base of the robot, and this blue dot that looks like it's not moving, that's the gripper. I set the desired x, y and z position and I'm iterating the gripper angle to get this nice animation. The inverse kinematics calculates the motor angles at each iteration. I think it looks pretty cool and I can't wait to see this on the real robot. I'm gonna quickly go through the code so you can roughly see what I did. So I wrote the inverse kinematics function, I just transferred it to the Python script. I defined the length of the linkage, the x, y and z position stays constant and I iterate through the gripper angle. And at the end I just plot it out to get the animation. Also, to plot this out, you actually need forward kinematics function, which I wrote from the top of my head, because it's quite easy, and that's why it took me three tries before I got it right. So this script didn't take that much time, and it saved me a lot of time because debugging this on the real robot would be a huge pain. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna spend on this project, but sometimes it's useful to do simulations and I could model the robotic arm in Blender and instead of this ugly graph, I could make a Blender animation that looks like the real robot. By the way, if you find this interesting and you want to support the channel, you can download the project files from my Patreon. You can also just code it yourself, I've shown you how I've done it, but downloading them will save you a lot of time. I've been modeling this assembly for two days, and I'm just gonna quickly go through the parts and show you what I've done. So this is the controller bottom. By the way, all of the models are parametric. So I have a bunch of parameters for this model, and I can change the dimensions anytime I want. So I can, for example, make the legs longer, and you can see that it instantly updates. It's quite magical. I mean, it takes longer time to model, but then if you want to change something, you don't have to remodel anything. You just change a single number and it updates. So this is what the controller looks like. It has two buttons, potentiometer, two joysticks, and the LED light. If you look under the cover, there's the PCB, and this is the hold for the cables. It gets bolted down with four bolts, and from the bottom it has this part, which slides into the electronics box. There's just one thing that's kind of annoying about this controller. Since it's all connected to this PCB, I can't like modify these dimensions of the buttons and the potentiometer. And if you look at the whole controller, this part needs to be lower because the buttons aren't that long and this is quite problematic because if you look at the top of the controller you have no way of printing this unless you use supports it's not that big of a problem but this surface is probably gonna look quite shitty so this is the box for the electronics if we look inside there's the pcb there's the buck converter and the battery I've added a lot of holes, for example this is for coding the Arduino, this is for the servo cables I think, this is for a switch, and the cable from the controller is gonna be up here, going into the controller, so you can just hold the controller like this and control the robotic arm, which is gonna be behind it, or if you want to, you can take the controller out, this slides out, and you can hold it anywhere you want. I mean, within the length of this cable. With the assembly, I also got kind of lucky. If you look at this LED, it's right in the center. And if I make this top invisible, the PCB is actually here. It just happens so that it's exactly in the middle of this box. So it's gonna be symmetric from the top and look even better. I'm also gonna need to make another box for the pneumatics, but that will be in a future video. 
yeah that's pretty cool i've already printed all the parts and now i'm gonna assemble them this video is sponsored by pcbway if you haven't seen my previous videos i've basically put all of the electronics into these two pcbs learning to design them wasn't hard at all and it was also super cheap if you use pcbway you get 10 pcbs for five dollars and if it's your first time using them you can click the link in the description and you will get a five dollar discount for your first order they also do manufacturing stuff like CNC machining, injection molding and 3D printing. So if you want to step up your projects, you can check them out. It's the next day, I've got all the parts printed. First I'm gonna assemble the electronics box and then the controller. And then this piece which connects them together. I hope everything will be okay. I know of one mistake, which is this box. I bought these super small hinges and they should fit onto the box. When I was printing the bottom of this electronics box, I've noticed that these holes are missing and I was like, what the fuck? I remember modeling them and it's because of this timeline. So Fusion 360 has this timeline of features so you can go back in time and kind of see what features you've added. And for some fucking reason, I had this marker about here and at this time I haven't modeled the holes in it. And wherever you have the marker, if you save the part as an STL file, it's gonna be saved without these features. Lesson learned, and I'm not gonna reprint this. It would take too much time. I'm just gonna drill the holes in. I can also just attach the hinges to the top of the box and then use them as a guide to drill the holes. I hope I got a drill bit for that. I'm using the cheapest filament known to mankind, so I got a lot of stringing. I always blow it with this hot air gun to get rid of it. This is not very stiff, I could have made it better since it's gonna hold the controller. But it should be alright, it's not that important. This has a lot of holes for cables, but even then I forgot to add cables for the pneumatics. So I'm probably gonna like drill new holes or just use the holes that are for the servo cables. By the way, this bolt organizer is the most useful thing I've printed. I use this every single day. I got about a million of these soldering iron tips and I always forgot to change them when I'm putting the heat set inserts in. This is too thin, it goes all the way through and then I end up making holes in my 3D prints. So this is for the electronics PCB. Before I put that in I need to drill the holes I talked about for the hinges. So I'm going to put this top cover on it which has the holes in it. I'm gonna put the hinges into that and use them as a guide to drill the holes in this part. I'm gonna get the drill. 2.5 millimeters. That's quite small. I don't have another one, so I'm gonna drill it with this one. Okay, this is sick. These hinges cost about 50 cents or something for 10 of them, so this was a great investment. The button is gonna be attached from the outside, so I need to unscrew these bolts. Sick. Now I just need to attach the PCB. A 
Okay, I plan to attach the back converter and the battery with Velcro tape. But first I'm gonna attach the PCB to make sure it works. I also forgot to mention that I fucked up the PCBs a bit. In KiCad, if you make a hole, you define it by radius, not diameter. And I'm used to all the CAD programs, you usually define the hole by diameter. So I've put 3.5 millimeters as what I thought was the diameter, but it was the radius, so I, the holes are too big. So I printed these adapters that fit into the hole, and now it accepts M3 bolts. The PCB is attached, back converter, this is for the battery. Yeah, I also need to screw in the switch. For the battery, there's a hole for charging it. Instead of just using this rainbow cable, I've put it inside this black one, which changes the diameter as you change the length. And to prevent it from looking like this, I've made this clamp, it just screws into this small plastic hole, and it clamps the cable. I can lock the box with this bolt, it's like a key. If you don't have screwdriver, you're not getting in. Okay, this looks pretty sick. And if I flip the switch, Nice. Let's do the control now. Two heatset inserts for the PCB. These two are also for heatset inserts for this part, which will slide into, well, this part, which is gonna go onto the box. I've designed this so when you put the top of the controller on, it squeezes this cable. So even if you yank on it, it shouldn't disconnect. I also made these custom caps for the joysticks. So this is the electronics box finished, the robotic arm is gonna sit behind it. You can control it and if you want to, you can take the controller out and control it from any place you want, well within the reach of this cable. You can open it anytime and you got access to all of the components. I learned from my hexapod mistakes and I actually made the hole for guarding the Arduino bigger. I'm also gonna do one last thing. Never mind, this looks fucking awful. I thought about adding this sticker because you can't really see the light and if you add something in the hole you can see it better, but this looks fucking shit. I spent about 3 hours soldering these cables, it's just to extend the servo cables and also the pneumatics. So I'm going to connect them to the main PCB and then we can test out the inverse kinematics of this robotic arm. I hope I've connected it well. Yeah, that looks good. I added the inverse kinematic function to my Arduino code and now we can check out the inverse kinematics. Right now the XYZ position is constant and I'm changing the gripper angle. Okay then the vertical axis. This is past the max angle of this motor so it can't reach straight down. Yeah this is better. Then left to right. Fuck. And this is what happens when you overreach the max position. I also thought about adding inverse dynamics, which is like telling this gripper to exert some force or something. But I realized the servers don't have torque control, so I can't do that. This is just a prototype by the way. The next step is to test out the pneumatics. I've already made the gripper, I just haven't tested it. So that's gonna be in the next video. If you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon and see you next time.